everybody. Hi, this is Nicholas A. Casado, and I'm your host of the Biomedical Engineering News. And today is Thursday, March 25th, 2021. Can you believe it? We are having a great day over here. Just got off work. Um, and try and get into this. And uh, we've got Biohack special i hope you guys can get excited for this because i know i am and um da, 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 yeah let's yeah oh uh, well you're gonna get it because it's gonna be pretty cool pretty cool all right so just uh want to do things a little bit different today i know i've been uh pretty dry reading abstracts and talking about you know, research, and I guess it's fun and entertaining for me, but I want to make it a little bit entertaining for you guys, so, um, make it such fun, if you guys are watching on YouTube right now, good for you, we've got a live chat, so I'm just gonna type something in, hey guys, and hopefully it'll pop up on the screen when I switch over, um, and we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but, um, there I am. Gonna transition over. And this is not a product placement. This is just something, you know, I just find interesting. Hopefully I'll dive deeper into these things, you know, and give my own trials on the Patreon. So yeah, if you don't know, we've got a Patreon now. And the Patreon is uh getting there. I don't really know what to say about it. Um it is, it is eclectic, and I feel like, um, I feel like I haven't done anything yet, so I'm about to get into it, um, get excited, it's just nerve-wracking to, to try peptides, you know, um, try to transcend reality, um, in a sober manner, so, um, you know, biohacking, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the biohack routine that I've got going on today, Hopefully we can learn from it. I'm going to try to clip out some stuff and do some uh, good product placement. You know, I think they they get a lot of money on, um, on you know, uh, just product reviews. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Okay, so let's move on to what I've been looking at. So I don't know if you can see on the screen, but this is some weird uh, epigen epigenetic substance. And I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. Um, symbiotica. And my girlfriend, she actually is, She I see it in the fridge. She likes it. She takes it. We're going to have to ask her more about it because I don't know much about it. But it looks interesting. Now, what I've been researching, what I just purchased, is actually this C60 um, Power Purple. Um, pretty cool. Let me transition over here. Pull it up big screen. It's called C60. Now, you're probably wondering what C60 is. Well, it's a free radical scavenger, it is the most powerful antioxidant known. All right. So C60 is a naturally occurring molecule comprised of 60 carbon atoms forming something that looks like a hollow soccer ball. In fact, it's the only molecule of, um, you know, of a uh, single element that forms a spherical cage. So this unique structure makes a C60 a free radical sponge and with the ability to neutralize free radicals and reset itself again and again. All right, so it's, um, yeah, it's not like a conventional antioxidant, you know, it actually maximizes the efficiency of the cells in producing energy, but may also provide cellular protection against many toxic environmental factors. All right, so we've got this lady, she's walking around up here, seems to be cold. <laughs> And, um, you know where I found out about this? This is, uh, from a podcast, um, what is it called? 
macroaggression. So macroaggression. Pretty interesting podcast with uh, Charlie, um, Charlie R- Robinson. Yeah, they don't really have much on it, but um, yeah. Well, there's a couple macroaggressions. There is, wow, there's a couple of macro. Charlie Robinson, yep, here we go. And basically goes in there and dives deep. And he, so he's the, he's the octopus of global control guy. He's sort of like a guy that sort of pokes into the, the deep state. And well, he had this guy on and he was talking about C60. And he was saying, why isn't this more popular? You know, and I kind of wonder the same. And maybe we can look into, maybe they've got a video we can play for you guys. Um, hopefully, um, if you're watching live on, okay, so they got, uh, just subscribe to it. They've got tips to save your vision, improve eyesight, 10 tips to improve digestion, um, seen on TV, Kevin Harrington. Okay, so it's just a bunch of supporting sexual libido, the C60. For your thyroid. And basically I got the olive oil. And I'm probably going to do a placement on it. Probably for the Patreon. Coming up. Give you my review. Bought the olive oil. And it's 4 ounces for about 82 bucks. So I'll let you guys know how it goes. Ooh. Maybe I'll grow some wings or something. But, uh, yeah, I feel good about it. I definitely feel, um, you know, I feel like, yeah, this is something that I'm just going to have to do long term and and just not really think about it and then just keep going for it. So I'll keep you updated. Now, another thing that sent me down the spiral, you know, I was looking at Shalag, Shalagjeet, Shalagjeet. So Shalagjeet is actually a pretty interesting um, complex. So it's a resin from the Himalayas, from the Gilgit Mountains. Now let's just look at this video and see. What is natural Shilajit? Origins. Shilajit. It seems that people are more and more turning to nature. supplements. Natural shilajit is just one of these traditions, but a prominent one. So what is natural shilajit? Shilajit is an organo-mineral product of natural origin, characterized by a complex chemical composition. It is found in niches of mountains where shilajit forms as a crust of dark color resin-like consistency. In its untreated form, natural shilajit is a heterogeneous resin-like substance of dark brown or brown-black color with a grainy, shiny, or matte surface, containing various inclusions of plants, small fragments of rocks, insect shells, and mummified animal waste products. How does raw resin turn into pure shilajit? We carefully process the raw substance by applying the latest technologies. All sorts of ballast substances are removed by water extraction, centrifugation, and filtration. The purified resin is a thick, homogeneous mass of dark brown or black color having a shiny, smooth surface, bitter taste, and a specific spicy smell. It completely dissolves in water and poorly in alcohol. This is how the raw substance turns to high-quality natural shilajit, ready to use for therapeutic and cosmetic use. Ancient East healers used shilajit to treat fractures and dislocations, polio and migraines, epilepsy and poisoning, stomach ulcers, and tuberculosis. Even these days, shilajit is an essential part of folk medicine. Why so? It became possible because of a unique combination of biologically active organic and mineral substances, trace elements, vitamins, essential oils, and other compounds. About 85 in total. Natural shilajit resin is mostly valued for humic acid, which has an exciting ability to remove toxins and heavy metals from the body. 
А вы шишки. Yeah, the herbal range, you know, I think like what brings this out? It's like uh grows in the area of shilajit extraction determines the spectrum of characteristics shilajit has on the body. Does the Altai region where we extract raw resin meet these requirements? The answer is yes. The Altai region is one of the most vital ecoregions in the whole world, characterized by its richness and diversity in species, communities, and environmental processes. Due to the plants growing in this area and the unique environment, the Altai Mountains is currently the birthplace of the most valuable shilajit. The region notably escaped destructive urbanization processes, and today the territory represents a unique landscape reserve, carrying spiritual and aesthetic values as equally important as natural wealth. We support your desire to maintain an inner and outer balance using organic supplements such as shilajit. Thus, we offer you a All right. So that's definitely a product place, man. I love it. It looks great. I think I was drawn to this one, pure black. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess it's all the same, but this one is actually pretty cool because it includes gold and silver uh, inside it. So it's, you know, it's actually, uh, it's colloidal, you know, so it, it um, yeah. So I guess there's a biohack in eating gold. So, gold to get smarter. Um, eating gold for IQ boost. How's that? There you go. Look at this guy. This looks like some Formosa. Gold is highly valued in ancient times was even considered a type of Chinese medicine. Nowadays, people are experimenting with the nutritional benefits of the precious metal. But what are the effects on the human body? From desserts to pharmaceuticals, we look at how gold plays a role in the foods, beverages, and medicines we consume. Our Sunday in-depth report. <laughs> This looks like a long one. In-depth report. Oh my gosh. Li Shunzhen. Raw gold has toxins that are removed through processing. Gold processed into gold leaf or foil can then be used as medicine. It can aid the spirit, harden bone marrow, and remove pathogens from the five internal organs. In ancient times, Chinese medicine doctors used gold as an expensive type of medicine. Nowadays, however, people are using gold as a food ingredient. Some fine dining restaurants... Dun, 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 dun. Customers. Look at this guy taking a big spoonful of some gold. <laughs> This guy's putting on meat. Raw meat. In recent years, some businesses have been putting gold into alcohol. Yeah, gold slogger. This is our gold brewing equipment. The clear liquid is the alcohol, and the fine pieces inside are the gold foil. The system allows us to mix the gold in quickly. Taking a closer look, we see the gold foil floating inside. 
Few people know the hard work behind production. Each type of alcohol is a little different, so it has a different type of interaction with gold. We need to carefully control the gold volume, fermentation period, temperature, and pressure. It's a lot to it. I mean, do you, do we, we aren't really getting the biohack of it, but it's, it's good. Here we go. The Food and Drug Administration says regulations existed long ago governing the use of edible gold leaf. Gold is often used for its decorative color and can be used for cakes, candy, and chocolate in suitable amounts. We ask that gold for food use have a purity of over 90%, with a silver content below 7% and copper content below 4%. If you look at the chemical structure of pure gold, you'll see that it has no toxins. What we fear most is that businesses aren't clear and use gold compounds or gold chloride, which can cause skin inflammation, gastroenteritis, or acute renal failure. The Ministry of Health and Welfare doesn't have a limit on the use of gold as a pigment. For decoration, you just need a little layer to cover the top, meaning it shouldn't exceed prescribed volumes. For gold used as a food product, we will have to food make an assessment. When gold. Most edible gold takes the form of gold leaf. Gold leaf. Gold leaf is made by hand. Made by hand. Traditional gold leaf can be pounded to 100 nanometers, but it's difficult to control the thickness. It may be 110 or 150 nanometers, and there won't be any uniformity. Huh. Tan Shang Wen has been researching gold for 30 years. He entered a printing company as one of his first jobs and became interested in gold after seeing a technique for stamping business cards with gold. He would later stumble into nanotechnology. Nanotech from stamping cards? First we take out the nanogold foil so we can hold it in our hands and not okay. so it. Can you see the gold seam to disappear? Now we take a look at the traditional gold foil. If we rub it, lights start to come out. Because it was hammered to this thickness, it doesn't have a molecular structure. Pretty cool right there. Nanotech. absorption and can be accurately measured. Its use in medicine could help to increase Taiwan's competitiveness in biotechnology. Alright, I think that was pretty good. It's not labor intensive and doesn't require a large plant. But you need trained experts and a small team which can assist in the development of medicine and patent applications. If we're able to make these drugs, the technology can be transferred to international pharmaceutical companies. From medicinal use this is great. Do you guys feel like you learned a lot? Because I feel like I did. I feel like um, that was just mainly for entertainment. But right now, I, I mean, I, I had a great, great show. Um, check out David Wolf's website. He's a telegram aficionado that um, has a lot of these things. And I think I've talked about it before. Uh, instead of colloidal silver, um, you know, there is um, you know, there is actually um, yeah, there is actually uh, ch -ch -ch. um, what is there? I don't know. Um, there is colloidal silver concentrate, which is trademarked as coated silver, and this is more a uh, bioavailable. It's like a n nano particle. Um, here we go. Our coated silver was perfected at Clarkson University Laboratory in upstate New York. With a whopping 20,000 parts per million silver, this product is a world-class antimicrobial, vegan, non-GMO, superior quality. Superior quality. Silver, a technologically highest concentration in the world, safe and stable, water and food additive. Add one drop to your drinking water. Very dramatic. Drops per bottle. One drop coated contains more silver than an entire bottle of colloidal. Pretty cool. One drop is better than a whole bottle of colloidal. 
So, yeah, he offers to Symbotica. My girlfriend likes that. The Super C60. But I saw that it actually has sunflower oil. Which, um, not very good. Seed oils are bad. But, uh, you know. Whatever. Um, C60 here. It's, uh, there's no good evidence to support using C60 for COVID-19. It's so funny they have to make that remark on WebMD. Um... Yeah, yeah, we've got a bunch of news articles I want to get into, but um, nothing really stuck out to me. So hopefully, you know, we'll we'll keep doing these biohack segments, and if I find a you know good shows, we can yeah, we can do it over, right? All right. So I think that might be it for today. Grateful for you guys. It's a short one, but uh, yeah, look forward to doing more with you. I'm gonna try to make these timings a little bit more predictable but uh hope you guys have a wonderful night day whatever and get out of here thanks guys Woo! yeah it's the biohack special Ba-ba. hey guys also uh just a psa um i've been super into uh crypto so i cover some crypto stuff but um there's also some just try and make some money you know so support me on patreon um maybe i'll give some crypto advice grumpy coin is pretty cool Uh, it's on the up and up it's a charity coin that actually donates to you know, like shelters, animal shelters. So they did 70,000 donation and they plan to keep doing it and have a pretty cool uh, model. They just had big trouble cease and desist order from the original Grumpy Cat and they um, they are suing in retrospect. So it's actually good. I think they've got a good case against it. So we're going to be all right. Um so get yourself some grumpy coin, maybe some shopping.io. Um, and hope you guys have a wonderful day out there. All right, that's all for us. Yep.